here to stay
Six unbeaten in the league. Can we make it lucky number seven today as Jacko's addicts head to Shrewsbury, knowing that come the end of the day, we might not only be in the top half of the table, but just six points off the playoffs. The lads are up at Shrewsbury as we speak. And I'll tell you what, it is wet and very windy up there at the Montgomery Waters Meadow. Hoping to end the week on the high. Great to see Thomas Sangard up there too. I'm sure it's been a pretty much of a culture shock this week. But he's certainly enjoying himself. Listen, pack show. We'll speak exclusively to caretaker boss Johnny Jackson. And goalkeeper Craig McGivory. He made a great assist on Tuesday. We'll also hear from women's team star Mary Bashford. And look back at Tuesday's draw up at Morecambe. Delighted to say that Curbs is with me today, but sorry, Curbs, I'm even more delighted to say we've got this man in between us. I'm so am I, because he's got rid of Brady. <laughs> it's over the line, and it's Jaden Stockley again. It is a big Charlton TV welcome to the headmaster, Jaden Stockley. Jaden, how are you? Yeah, great, thank you. Good very to see much. you. Yeah, good. Listen, I've got to ask, because I ask different people at different times, what's it like watching yourself back and goals? Do you do that? Watching just goals is all right, watching all the good <laughs> things you do back, that's really good. But um, yeah, I do watch a lot of stuff back, but I'm quite good at sort of, say, I score the goal on the Saturday, Monday, it's focused on to the next game. Mm. How frustrating has the last week been for you? We're delighted you're with us, but we'd rather watching you yeah. play. It's been tough. It's been a lot of training on your own because the lads have been going to the opposite ends of the planet to play football for the last week. And uh, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been tough. It is, especially when you feel, you know, you're a bit, a bit sad that the, the reason why you got sent off was a bit... A bit dodgy. Mm. Well, we'll come on to that a little bit later and we will look at that. But are you looking forward to it with us, though? Yeah, I'm really excited. Could we claim mistaken identity last week <laughs> when he got sent off? I don't think so. <laughs> Again, we will come on to that in a bit. But look, Curbs, we, we picked up four points in the two matches where, where Jaden's not played. It's a decent return, but we missed him Tuesday, didn't we? Yeah, uh, both boxes, mm. as it turns out. You know, um, I think when you're playing the Morecambe's and the Shrewsbury's this world, you need you set the fort to come back and do a job and, uh, you know, pick up or uh, defend that near post or whatever. And, uh, you know, he, he was sorely missed on Tuesday for that. Mm. What are you expecting today? Very similar to what we saw in midweek, I think. Um, you know, we've seen the conditions. Um, shows be done well to get a point out of their game midweek, uh, going down to 10 men against Sunderland. So they'll be coming into it full of confidence and, and so should we. Mm. So, uh, you know... Will we get an opportunity to play? You know, is it going to be the, the conditions going to dictate that perhaps you can't play as much as you want to today? Jaden, you've texted a few of the lads, haven't you, this morning? What have they said? I said, I can't believe you've gotten out of this one. <laughs> it is freezing, they've said it. But uh, when you're on a run, you're on. I don't think you care too much about it. I think the, the last six games just proved that we can go anywhere and get results. So I think that they've got that in their head. But, you know, it is, it's going to be bitterly cold. It certainly is indeed, but we are looking forward to it. OK, kick-off less than 45 minutes away. Lots to come in the show before kick-off, but let's hear from Johnny Jackson, who caught up with Charlton TV a little earlier. Jacko, it was a bit of a disappointment on Tuesday night, but it did keep the unbeaten run going, and there wasn't much time to think about it before coming to Shrewsbury today. I mean, how is the group feeling after that? Really good, yeah. Well, obviously, the initial, the initial uh, disappointment we got over quickly and realised that um, it's a good point on the road, backed up by a win at home, and if we can come here, hopefully get the three points, then you have to look at that as a really successful week. So, yeah, we dusted ourselves down, quick quick turnaround, important that the boys got um, their recovery in and, and done things right. And uh, I said before you know it, we'll be on the road again, we'll be up at Shrewsbury, and here we are. And uh, obviously it's that stage of the season where there's so many games coming, you have to look at the squad. Two changes today, and Pap Suare comes in and Corey Blackett-Taylor as well. What was the thinking behind those two changes? 
Yeah, just to bring a little bit of freshness to the group. Uh, I think DJ's been incredible for me in, in, in the games that he's played, but just felt that we have to be careful with him. And uh, yeah, I felt he looked a little bit tired on, on Tuesday and, um, and we looked at how he came out of that in the next couple of days and just felt that it was an opportunity um, to freshen it up with Corey, you know, who's, who's done great and uh, deserves an opportunity as well. So it's like the changes I made are, are to just try and bring a little bit of freshness without making wholesale changes, without ripping it up, giving people opportunities. Uh, it's not that any, no one's done anything wrong or you know, not dropped. It's, it's just, it's just uh, to try and uh, utilise the squad and bring some freshness. And the big news on the bench, Jonathan Leco is back. He's been a big miss over these last few weeks. Uh, that really gives us some extra ammo, doesn't it? Yeah, he travelled with us Tuesday. I just felt it was a little bit too soon because he hadn't had much training. So um, we took him up there to, to Morecambe with us and he got some good work in. Obviously not on the pitch, but well, uh, in the warm-up for, for that game. But also uh, with Josh Hornby behind the scenes, we got some good work into him. Um, and I felt like he's ready to be involved today. Obviously difficult having been out that long to, to throw him straight in as a start, but certainly one that, that could come on and impact it. And we always like to talk about the conditions a little bit. The pitch looks good, but it's very, very cold and it's very, very windy out there. So that, that may well play its part today, mightn't it? Yeah, it's going to be difficult conditions. The pitch is good. The pitch is good. There's no, no complaints there. But like you say, it is cold uh, and it is very windy, which you know, can make, make for a different type of game. We have to be prepared for that. We have to turn up again with the right attitude, be prepared that, that it might be a battle at times. It might not always be pretty. Uh, but you have to compete and then, and then hopefully get on top that way. Good luck, Jacko. Thank you. <laughs> he does look cold there, Jacko, doesn't he? But two changes from Tuesday. Corey Blackett-Taylor comes in for DJ, perhaps Soiree in for Chris Gunter with Ben Purrington going to left centre-back. And uh, interesting enough, Alex Gilby is uh, borrowing your captain's armband for the moment, Jaden. But Kerbs, you sensible decisions there? Well, yeah, I think, I think all, the, all the other changes to the side has been enforced, really. But this is the first time... You know, what he said, didn't he, Jacko, when he took over? You know, this is at Sunderland. You're my first 11, keep the shirt. But as he's gone on, we've took injuries and suspensions, and so that's why we've had to change. But mm. I think sensible, because the two wing-backs have been bombing up and down, and, and, and so I assume he did look tired, mm. so you don't want to struggle with him and, and an injury. And I think that he's seen enough of Purrington that he can play as a left-sided centre-back, so... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how we go. Jaden, there has been a, a change of system since Jacko's come in, a 3-5-2. Yep. Do you prefer playing in a two or yeah. on your own in a three? I've, been, I, I've played both in my career. I mean, I uh, scored the most amount of goals I have in a season playing a one. Um, but I do love playing a two, especially someone like Josh and like Con who just run for days and they're brilliant at running in behind. It's, it's, uh, it makes my job a lot easier, especially those fight balls that come up sometimes because they just their runs have to be tracked and you can't really be double teamed on. Mm. And just Jonathan Lico as well. Great curbs that he's yeah. back fit and yeah. available now. Well, we've got the competition, haven't we? You know, you look at, look at the bench and the people that aren't in the squad. I mean, you've got the competition there. Mm. And uh, as Jacko said, try and keep the shirt. And as I say, I mean, he has, he has done that in terms of team selection. This is a bit different today. I think when you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday... You have yeah, to make some bit, changes. Yeah, it's you? a bit of a slog, and mm. uh, you know, so uh, whoever comes in today should be nice and fresh. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, table, shall we? Starting with the bottom half, because we did drop into it after that draw on Tuesday in 14th. Um, today's opponent, Shrewsbury, 21st. They've not won in any of the last three, but did come from behind, as you said, Curbs, uh, mm. to get a, a good draw with 10 men at uh, home to Sunderland after former Alex Loney, David Davis was sent off on the stroke of half-time. Our next opponents here at the Valley in 10 days' time, Ipswich, a point and a place above us. We're looking at the top half, Plymouth and Wigan both dropped points on Tuesday, which meant that Rotherham and Wickham leapfrog them to go first and second respectively. Wickham thrashed Plymouth 3-0 at home park. Kyle Robinson's Oxford moved to within a point of the playoffs by beating Fleetwood. They went above MK Dons. Portsmouth continued their great recent form by winning away at Lincoln. That's four wins in five now in League One. And Jaden, look, the, the table has taken shape. Who do you feel is the best team that we've come up against this season? I think the best team that we've come up against, just for their identity really, is sort of the Rotherhams and Wickhams, where they are on the table suggests that. They're, they're so hard to play against. That's why I was really impressed with how we, how we played on the Tuesday night. 
Jacko just, you know, taken over and, and that character from the boys to play someone who played the same formation as us, to match them in, in everything they've done. They've just come down, so they've got a team that's kept, pretty much kept the same squad from mm. the champ and we and we matched them and probably should have won on the night. So that was a, that really showed me that, you know, we mean business. Mm. Nine points off the playoffs. Can we do it? Are you thinking about it? Has it been mentioned in the dressing room at all? Yeah, I mean, I think at one point we were up to 12, weren't we, in, in, uh, when I was watching the other night. So, yeah, we've got our eyes on the playoffs, but we've got the eye, our eye on trying to keep the momentum for the run because the longer you do it, you start creeping up places, you start thinking, hey, there's six points behind these. If, and then you start playing the teams around you and mm. you think, if we beat you now, then we'll, that's another three points. Because in both of the promotions you won as a manager, you went on fantastic mm. winning runs. It was 12 consecutive winning runs back in, what, 99, 2000, mm. wasn't it? What, what was the key then to that consistency? But what's happening now? Consistent team selection and... and you know, the players didn't feel tired. They was, obviously, because the championships are slog as well. But, you know, when you're getting results, the confidence is up and no-one wants to come out of the team. Mm. Uh, and sometimes you have to do it, like Jacko's done today. Um, but I've, I've always thought, you know, with, with the team selection, if you can keep it simple, uh, you, you're, you're going to get results from it. And that's exactly what's happening now. You know, when Lee was in charge, when we first started doing this, and, and even Nigel, I couldn't... We was coming, I couldn't tell you what the team was, roughly. You know, we'd be four or five players out, yeah. wouldn't we? There'd be four, five, six, seven changes yeah, at yeah, any given yeah. game, wouldn't there? I can understand that because of for all sorts of reasons. But I think when players know where where they're at, you know, this is how we're playing at the moment. Three at the back, five across midfield, two up top, and whoever comes in has to fit in. And whoever comes in and does well, you stay in. Mm. You know, people know where they stand. Mm. 11 games in League One today. There's one game that's going on tomorrow. That is Ipswich against Crew. Six of the top seven are all up against each other today. Sixth place Sunderland go to Cambridge. Seventh place Oxford host top of the table Rotherham. Third versus fourth is Plymouth welcome Wigan to home park. And Sheffield Wednesday, who are fifth, are at home to second place Wickham. And I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity today, isn't it, Jaden? Yeah, looking at those fixtures there, I mean, Sheffield play Wickham, like you said, Plymouth, Wigan, Oxford, Rotherham. That's, this is the chance now to start start climbing the league, start p picking them points up. And then when we do get to play these teams, to get the three points against them then. Mm. Kerbs, I mean, it, it, with the top teams playing each other, you, points have to be dropped, don't they? So, yeah. And you do look at that. Yeah. You know, managers and players say they, they don't. Say they don't. But, no, you do. So that's why today is a really big game. We, yeah. all, we said after the weekend that these two away games are going to be even more trickier than playing Plymouth because of the venues and mm. etc. But there's an opportunity today to really close the gap. Fantastic opportunity. Remember, if things go our way, we could just be six points off the playoffs. We shall wait and see. Optimistic. Oh, well, be you never know. Well, no, yeah. but, I'm, but I'm always still looking towards the end of the season. That's the important <laughs> thing. Chip away, chip away. That's all we can do. OK, uh, more on today shortly, but let's go to club news now, shall we? And some big big ticketing news as well. As a festive thank you to all season ticket holders, owner Thomas Sangard is again giving them the opportunity to bring three friends for free to our next two home matches against Ipswich and Cambridge, just like he did here against Plymouth. If you are a season ticket holder watching on social media, you can redeem your three tickets by visiting the Valley in person by calling 0330 one four double four double four or by visiting booking.cafc.co.uk the fans made such a difference against Plymouth let's get this place filled and, and Jaden you were here for the the Plymouth game didn't play of course but the, the lads talking afterwards what it was like playing in front of a pack valley it was great it was almost a chance for me to you know, act like a fan again it was it was absolutely packed it was the, it was building before I mean driving in although I was absolutely gutted I was like it was it was nice just to see that build up and that mm -hmm. tension in the stadium early, even when the lads went out for a warm up, and uh, you could just feel that it was going to be a special day. How important is that from a playing point of view? Do, you, do yeah. you feel that tension even in the warm up? It's massive, yeah. You, you you try and use it to your advantage. That's why the start of a game, especially, is is so important in when you do have a packed house like that, and they'll feel it just as much. You have got to try and use that because the Plymouth players wouldn't have experienced that a lot either. So we had to try and use it against them. So the start that the lads made was was incredible, and it really. It's, it's interesting, you know. When we first come back to the valley, uh, there was kids for a quid and all them sort of things, and, and other clubs started copying. 
I bet they start copying this. Yes. Mm. I bet this initiative has gone all around the league. You know, some of them might not have to, the Sunderlands of this world, but a lot of them would look at that and go, well, can we fill our stadium They've by doing this? Yeah. Which I believe. Yeah, can we do this? Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, so, so the initiative, you know, we're the first to do it. It looks like it's going to take off. We should take copyrights on that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, a streaming update now. And uh, as always, we'd like to remind all fans that today's game is only available to live stream outside of the UK and Ireland. That's due to EFL broadcasting rules, as is the case with every Saturday 3pm game this season. We can only live stream outside of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Jersey, Guernsey, the Isle of Man and the Republic of Ireland. Overseas fans, though, can purchase a match pass for today's game for just £10 by going to cafc.co.uk and looking ahead to next Tuesday's Papa John's Trophy knockout tie against Aston Villa. That game will be available to watch worldwide and match passes are also priced at £10 each. On the subject of Charlton TV curbs and Matty Holland will be in the all-new Charlton TV lounge when we host Ipswich on December the 7th. Then he'll be joining me in the studio for the game itself. For more information on the Charlton TV Lounge, please call 0208 333 4050 or email sales at cafc.co.uk. Curbs and I are looking forward to seeing Matty, aren't we? Yeah. Club shop news and there is 30% off all full price items in the Valley Superstore and online until Monday as part of its Black Friday deals. And this offer includes our new 2022 calendars and annuals, both of which are now available to purchase in person from the Valley Superstore or online. Now, guys, have a look at this. Charlton under-23s earned a cracking victory on Monday as they won 3-1 away at Swansea. The pick of the goals, without a doubt, came from Aaron Henry and his strike incredibly from inside his own half. Jaden, fancy trying that? Not bad, is it? I trained with him this morning. He's a good player. Train with, the, with all them boys this morning. It, they, uh, a few of them got some special things in the locker. I look forward to seeing them in the future in the Charlton first team. Finally, the rearranged charity match in memory of Charlton Academy graduate Paul Linger will take place at Hornchurch Football Club a week tomorrow. That's Sunday, December the 5th. Cluffy, as we knew him, sadly lost his batter with cancer in October. And Sunday's event, which will see Hutton FC take on Maccabi London FC at two, and then Tipples FC face Tipples All Stars FC at four, will help to support Paul's young family ahead of Christmas time. Frank Lampard Sr. will be managing one of the teams. Some other big names will be there are Muzzy Izzet, Terry Skibberton, John Fortune, and Johnny Jackson. There will be others too. I'll try and get down there. Curbs, you. Yeah, I'm going. I'm Curbs going, going as well. Yeah promises to be a festival of football and we hope that as many Charlton supporters as possible can head down there to show their support. Tickets will be available from the turnstiles on the day. OK, a women's team youngster Mary Bashford made her senior debut against Coventry United last week and Charlton TV caught up with her to talk about her very special week. So Mary, at the age of 17 you just made your senior Charlton debut. First of all, how did that feel? It felt really special. Yeah, it was a very proud moment for me and my family. Um, and it's just great to be given that opportunity to experience something a lot out of my comfort zone. You've been training with the first team since pre-season. How has that been for you and your development? It's been really good, yeah. It's good to get um, that experience and be around very experienced players um, that know what they're doing. And it's like so nice to learn from them and learn what they, how, they, how they play week in, week out. And how fast has this all sort of happened, Love? So you came through the Charlton under 16s and now you're sort of in amongst the first team. How has that been for you the past couple of years? Well, it's felt really quick. It feels like I've just shot up um, through the age, age groups. Um, so yeah, it's just very exciting to um, go up to that new level and um, be around these like, really experienced, amazing players. Karen spoke very positively uh, about you after the Coventry game. How's it been learning under her? She's really encouraging, like, she's a very supportive coach, um, but then also she's very, like, serious when it gets to it. Um, and I just love learning to her, listening to her is just, um, just such a great opportunity because she says stuff that I haven't even thought about, so it's just great to learn new things every day. And you're training with the first teams, but you're also still training with the under-21s. How's that been? How's it been learning under Kim Dixon as well, another Charlton legend? Yeah, it's, it's amazing really, like I never thought I'd be working so closely with them. Um, I'm just proud that I can see them every week and 
they just teach me so much and I feel like I'm learning so much every week. Um, yeah, it's a great opportunity. And lastly, coming up through the under 16s to the first team, it really shows that player pathway at Charlton. Yeah, yeah, it's been really supportive. Every player in this squad is just so supportive, so positive to me, and it's just been really encouraging. Um, helped me come up and be more confident and just um, be able to develop as a player. Like They've encouraged me so much to do that, so I'm very, very grateful for all of them. Yeah, great to hear from Mary there, and congratulations, Mary, on making your debut. I'm sure you have many more appearances in the first team. Do you remember your senior debut? I do, yeah. It was Northampton away. It was uh, for Bournemouth. Came on and got booked after a minute. <laughs> you did. <laughs> October 2009. Came off the bench after 79 minutes and got booked. <laughs> what did, should it was the gaffer. What did you say? Red as well. Uh, should it? Yeah, it was bad. Um, it, my manager was Eddie Howe at the time. Yeah, it was. Um, I think uh, everything happened. We missed a pen in that game. They scored one. You never forget. Brilliant. We'll come on to another red uh, in just a second, but you remember yours at all? Yeah, or, you know, yeah. was TV around then? <laughs> I got it on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, Chelsea at home, and um, we we lost West Ham. Obviously, we lost one nil. Mickey Joy scored, uh, but I remember the game because their goalkeeper got injured, John Phillips, I think, and there's no goalkeepers on the bench. So Tommy Langley had to go and go. So did he? And I spent 35 minutes trying to get a shot in. Because <laughs> you were mates with him as well. Yeah, mates you? with him, yeah, in the youth team. But uh, no, I lost 1 0. But that was my yeah. debut. The, the biggest thing I remember, there was no grass left on the pitch and it was in March. <laughs> Unbelievable. They're, they're different now, didn't they? <laughs> my league professional debut for Charlton at the Den. We were oh, all away. Good. And, what, the 2 uh, 0? No, no. I, I think we lost 1 0. I can't remember the score, but I went in late on Terry Herlock after two minutes. Oh, did you? <laughs> He ain't forgot that. Hello. Spotty 17 year old kid going late in Terry Hunt. <laughs> Keith Stevens, Rhino, come at me about waist high, 20 minutes in. It'd be a five game ban now with the sending off. Then it was yeah. just a booking. It was like, don't you do that, little kid. But uh, I certainly had a good impression on that and really enjoyed it. Right, let's talk present day, James, shall we? And have we said, look, it's great to have you with us as much as we'd want, want to be watching you uh, playing in the shirt today. You've been misbehaving, though, haven't you? Let's have a look at it. I mean, tell us, tell us what happened. Because obviously, Deji from last season, you. you no animosity there in any way? From no, last season. no, top man. Dead, like, got on really well last season. It was just, if the ref had stopped it and given us a pen, and no, nothing happens. It was just a bit of like... He didn't want to go there, I would have looked. No, it was just a bit of like, we, none of us were letting go of each other. That was it. There was no punches, nothing. It was just grappling. But he just wouldn't, like, I'm not even in the shot to start with because he's dragged me nearly out the box. Yeah. So he started it? Yeah, he's, he's obviously marking me from the corner. He's got no interest in going for the ball. And then it's just escalated from there. And the ref just never had, never had a hand on it. But I didn't do anything vicious. It was just a case so of... Look no, at I'm not right even right now. I'm trying to get in. He's got me around the neck there. And he is... Deji is the strongest man I've ever come across. So, like... And yet you did he, a good little... It looks like there, I'm on yeah. top of him. But really, he's got me on toast. <laughs> yeah, he's got. The thing is, there's no other camera angles, is there? No. Because if there no. was a, a yeah. few more camera angles, you might go away with yeah, it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Just I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, three games is, is was too much. It should have been two bookings off your part. I, I I personally thought it wasn't a red yeah. in the first place. It was just two yellows and get on with yeah. it, you know, and do it again. But what was your mind? What was going through your mind when you were walking off? When I was going off, it was I, early, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I was. The only saving grace was that he got sent off as well. Mm. So I was gutted that I left the lads and I just got in the changing room. Obviously, we, I heard the cheers because we scored straight after, and then I was pretty bored in the changing room, <laughs> just waiting there. You can't come out. No, you can't come out. You're, You're stuck not in there. To come out, no, no. no, so you're stuck in the changing room, just. Like waiting to hear stuff. <laughs> so what was it like when you heard the goal? Yeah, I was I was buzzing, but it was so loud. The Charlton fans were so loud. I thought it was a home goal. So I was like, oh no, I've killed the boys. And then I realised it was Pers again. The goal. Well, then you think about the fine and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet I bet you was more upset when all them crosses went in last week. <laughs> oh, don't. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we've was... mentioned you a few times when you've not been playing. But let's have a look at some scenes in the dressing room afterwards as well. Uh, and you didn't know about this camera, did you? No, I had no clue. So. Quite lucky, really. <laughs> Couldn't tell anything. You can see the lads as they come in, they start to realise the camera's there. Yeah. Who put the camera there then? Is it, is it our camera? I think so. Is it a relief in a, in a way after you've been sent off? Yeah. Your team is, is one? Yeah, it was more relief from me. What would you have said to, to Jaden? 
after the oh, game. So you were manager. Think, oh, said nothing because of the result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, just, and then find him on the way. Let's have a nice trip home <laughs> and, and not upset anyone. Yeah. I remember one time you tried to find me actually, and I went. Tried. To, I, I went in to see you on the Monday, and I said, I said, Curbs, all I said to the to the ref was, how did you get your badge? Oh, and he's booked me, and it was like five bookings or something. It yeah. wasn't a sending off. And you went, is you sure? Is that what you said? Carlo backed me up, and, and then you let me off the fine. Oh, OK. Hmm. We that probably nice. won. I can't remember. And I, yeah. and I had a decent left back coming in. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Saved the conversation, <laughs> didn't it? But let's, let's move on now and talk, talk about your time generally at Charlton, because it's been less than a year, but you've scored 18 goals yeah. for the club. It's been, it's been amazing. And from, from the moment I've come down and... and uh, Playing, playing with no fans, it was it's almost like I've been at two different clubs. You know, and from that from that time, it was, it was great to finally get to experience the fans. Sheffield Wednesday at home here at the start of the season, so it's it just was an instant fit. I just mm. from training, like you're worried when you go on loan. I mean, I've been on a fair few loans in my career, especially younger days. You know, I like don't have a beast early doors, but it just <laughs> clicked. The finishing was right on the first day, and it just. The whole setup just just seemed right to me. Mm. How keen were you to join permanently in the summer? I was very keen. Obviously, you, you you can't make it seem that way. Or like, there's loads of games that get played, don't there? And uh, I was I was desperate to get it. I would have done it after signing and being in a week on loan. It was just I knew it was the place to be. My head had already gone. I I didn't want to go back to Preston. It was it was a case of wanting to get it done early, and it did drag out longer than I thought. But the, the, there were rumours of Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, you know, how much did, did that play a part or was it always Charlton that you wanted to see? It was always Charlton because that's once you, I don't think you can take for granted as a striker, I was, I was scoring goals at Charlton. Um, I already laid the foundations that I wanted to continue. I have made the relationships with the boys, with the management at the time. You never know what you're going to experience somewhere else. So it was a case of, no, I've, I, I really want to go back and achieve something. Mm. We've raved on about this guy, haven't we, last season and this season as well. How, how pleased are you that we, we've, we've signed him permanently? Yeah, I think that, as Jane's saying there, uh, instantly when he came in, we knew we had a player. I think we said it in here, didn't we? You know, we knew we had a player. Um, and, a, and, a, and a leader as well. Yeah, and the other side, obviously, you come in with Lee. Yeah. And then the manager changes. Mm. And so it does go up in the air a little bit. He might have fancied someone else. You don't mm. know. So he's got to prove himself again. Uh, but I don't think anybody had any doubts that, that uh, we wanted to sign him. Mm. And uh, as I said, uh, both boxes, you can't, you can't just you know, look at perhaps the, the attacking side of it. He's, he's just as good defending it's for us. It's where the game's won and lost, isn't just it? Just as good boxes. defending for us. Yeah. It doesn't go unnoticed. Mm. You know? And uh, as I say, last week uh, when they've equalised, yeah. you probably would have been marking the big one. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it'd have been your fault. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 yeah, yeah, both sides. But I think, I think, you know, the club. I think every. I think every, we keep talking about how big we are, and, and we are a big club. But we've got to get back there yes. to being a big club. And signing people like Jaden, I think, proved the point. Coming yeah. from the Championship, you know, and he was prepared to drop down with us to go back up. Yeah. But I think, I think you saw the potential here. But. But this season has been so up and down for you, hasn't it? You were made captain and then you didn't play. Almost yeah. a style of play that wasn't your fault, but you seem to be a bit of the scapegoat. How tough was that? And, and the fact that we've alluded to of, of Nigel making lots of changes, of, of, of players not quite knowing whether yeah. they were going to play or not. It was disappointing. I mean, the, first of all, being captain was something that I desperately wanted in my career. And uh, I was, it was an unbelievable feeling to get the captaincy when Piercy's not playing to, to, to lead the boys out. I think when results don't go your way and uh, you can't blame managers for trying to think of any something to, to get a result, we weren't winning games and uh, it was a case of, you know, I, I, for me I felt like I wasn't playing bad football, I was actually playing, I was in a, a good bit of form, especially early on in the season. but. It's like Curves has been manager. It's it's a case of you. I'd, I've never held that against someone. They're they're going out there to try and get three points. I would never hold it against anyone. Then they're, they're not trying to lose games or draw games. It's 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 such. It must be such a hard position to be in. I was interested. How was it explained to you? It wasn't really. Oh, which, well, is, which was probably the I most disappointing thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, no didn't get the curly finger. No. no. But which, it was just announced. Yeah. No. It was. It, that's what disappointed me the most yeah. at that time. I think as being someone who. Did get named captain. It was just an honest conversation. Would have been nice. But the team just got announced, and that was it. Yeah, and it, it wasn't just me. It was you know six, yeah. seven players, like you yeah. said, at a time. So it was almost like 
it was happening too fast for even to process it. So, so final one then, Jacko's come in, the results are there for everyone to see, performances as well. What has he changed and, uh, and what is he like as a, as a manager? Like, speaking personally, I love it when a new manager comes in because it's clean slate, then you prove how good you are. It's one of them. I've always you batch yourself in your career to do that. And he's just given a, you know, a freshness, someone we've already got a relationship with. But when he's an assistant manager, when he's a, a coach, it's hard to you know, be at the forefront and give his ideas. And the lads just took it on board. I think he's complimented all the boys in this formation that we're playing. Mm. And he's also made it a standard in training that if you come below, you're not playing on the Saturday. And I think we needed that massively. Mm. Listen, it's great to have you alongside us. Again, we'd love to see you in the shirt up yeah. there today, but we'll look forward to the next time. In, enjoy today Thank anyway. You. Let's bring it back round to, to pretty much uh, midweek, shall we? Because uh, it was a, a decent draw, I suppose, going to Morecambe so soon after playing a, with, in front of a great atmosphere at Plymouth. I personally, Curbs, am still disappointed to go 2-0 up yeah. and not see the game out. How do you see it? Yeah, obviously. But I think that uh, in the whole scheme of things, you know, another point, as we're saying, if we can pick the three points up, it's, it's still a great run we're on. And, uh, you know, some of these places are difficult, but I think that we went two up and they, they scored straight away, didn't yeah. they, and got back in the, the game. And, you know, um, so, but as I say, on the scheme of things, you're disappointed because it is Morecambe and we had a chance to take the three points, but it's another point and we're unbeaten. Mm. And move on to, to, to today. If you can't win, don't lose. And I suppose that, that's did what happened. I mean, Jaden, you, you tuned in for this one, didn't you? Yeah. You watched us. Yeah, it was good. It was entertaining. It was uh, disappointing to have, only get a draw from the game, like you said, after being 2 0 up. But just, we want to be winning games. We want to go into these places and winning games. And that's rightly so. The lads were disappointed. Mm. What, what's been said, and I know you're not training with the lads at the moment, they've had a couple of days off as well. But who have you spoken to about what they said about how tough? It was on Tuesday. Yeah, I spoke to Connor uh, uh, about it. He says we got in some really good op uh, opportunities, some really good situations in the game where we could have probably done better with, not necessarily missing chances, but just making that final pass, bit of quality. And then the moments like this, really, which... Stuck your head away. Yeah, we're not really known for. Like, we, we, we don't concede goals like that. So that was the, that was the disappointment, I think. Mm. What would you have said after the game if you were Jacko Curbs? Well... I would have said I'm disappointed in that. We're, you know, we're two up and we, we haven't gone on and won the game. Mm. You, know, you score two goals away from home, you expect to take the points. Um, but we didn't. And I think what he's come out and said, you know, we're on a run. With, you know, we, we're, what, four wins and two draws from the games. And, you know, we move on to next, the next one, which is, yeah. which is today. And we did say sometimes, you know, you play the big clubs and we've played three of the top four. And then you play a lesser light and, you know, Perhaps you don't get the same energy for some reason. Mentally and physically, after the euphoria of Plymouth in front of a yeah. packed home crowd, yeah. to go, I, I feel we needed a, another home game and to play in front of the crowd again to get yeah. you up for it. So even if you're tired physically, mentally, you're going to be absolutely up for this. Yeah, but what, what impressed me about Tuesday as well was that the boys went up on the day and stayed overnight, mm. so they prepared properly. That's Premier League, isn't it? I, know, think they went day, I think they went the day before. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I'm saying. They've yeah. gone up the day yeah. before, played the game, yeah, stayed, yeah. stayed the night. Yeah. That's proper preparation. Yeah. I, I would like to think we'll be a lot fresher today, especially yeah. with the, the, the couple of changes. And it's the way we start. You know, we started against Plymouth. We was at them, as, as John, said, John said there, about the crowd and everyone was up for it. We need to start like that today yeah. and really get into Shrewsbury. Well, Craig McGivery made a fantastic assist on Tuesday, didn't he? And Charlton TV uh, caught up with him yesterday to preview today's trip to his former club. It's been the start of the season was tough. Obviously, the expectations and all that sort of thing, and it not quite being the start we wanted. Um, you can't beat the winning feeling. That that was something that we missed deeply. We just couldn't we couldn't buy a win. Um, so the last couple of weeks, they have been very, very enjoyable. The, the mood in the camp's changed. Like I said, winning games of football, there's, there's no better feeling. Um, and it breeds confidence, and I think that shows on the football pitch. I think when the supporters are watching games now, they can see that we've got an identity of how we're going to press, when we're going to press, and everyone's singing off the same hymn sheet. It's very, very simple. For me, it was just sort of ironing out little details. It was tiny little details, but they make a big difference when you go out on the football pitch. 
I think at times he's made it a lot more simpler for the for the group. Um, it's there's no grey area. It's it's very much this is what we're doing, and okay. Sometimes it's not the most pretty. Put the ball down, assess if we can play. If we can't play, play off a second ball. It's simple as that, but it's effective. It's working. Um, like you said, we've had four clean sheets in the last six games, and and we're on a good run of form, six and beaten. So it, it it does work. I think on Tuesday we had a bit more of an opportunity to play at times, which we did. Um, but I think the main thing, more than anything, it's just. Having he set out the stall of what he wants from us, um, clear messages and just simplified everything and, and everyone's buying into it. Yeah, well to be fair, most games, um, Jacko always says it to me, um, if, you can, if you see an opportunity and it's 2v1 or 2v2, then try and play quick if it's on to do it. But it was interesting actually, weirdly enough, because I picked the ball up uh, Dobbo's that she just said to me, just just turn it down a bit, just hold on to it for a second. And I've just seen Washer run and I thought, I'll hit it and see what happens. And as I've hit it, I've realised that as it's about to bounce, he's not met the bounce. And then it's obviously going to skid through and Con's obviously finished it. So then Dobbo's turned running over and he's gone, oh my bad, well played, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it's nice. Um, they don't happen that often. Um, but it is something that Jacko keeps saying every single game. If it's on to do it, why not? Just it gets us up the pitch. Potentially gets us in their half. They might kick it out of play, or even like it happened on Tuesday night where Kong gets in and finishes it very well. Like I said when I first signed, I've, it was it was a, a loud night. One time I played in front of the supporters for obviously for a different team, but to see a pretty much sold out Valley, it, it certainly makes some noise and as a footballer that they're what you they're the games you want to be involved in where the the, the, the roof's lifted off the place and everyone's enjoying what's going on at the minute. There's a good feeling around it from supporters all the way up to the chairman, all the way down to the players and staff. And for example on Saturday that it topped it off with getting the result and the performance that we got. Yeah, great to hear from Craig there. It seems like a really good lad, Jaden. Give us a lowdown on him. What's he like in the dressing room? He's good. He's a, he's a, he works so hard, so he's always in the gym. He's absolutely shredded. He, um, <laughs> he's a, he works really, really hard. He's, really, he's a really nice guy. A uh, clip of him early doors and the, um, him and Piercy get on really well. Right. They're, uh, they're, they're gym ads and, they're, and they love smashing dumbbells off each other's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it sounds like Pierce is the type of thing Piercey would do, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has been excellent in recent weeks, though, Craig, hasn't he? Yeah, but we moved quickly for him, didn't we? We yeah. and Amos went quick, it was done quick, and uh, that's what I liked about it. Mm. And, you know, another player that understands the club, appreciates the, yeah. the club, yeah. and, and, and thinks it's got potential. That's the thing. I think the players that are coming here are all thinking the same. This club has got mm. potential, and it's, it's been in the doldrums for, for too long, and are, are these set of players can take us back where we where we need to be. I, I'll keep trying to look for sort of dumbbell marks in the top of his head there. <laughs> sure. but listen, he made some assist, didn't he, for Connor? Yeah, he's, uh, he's got that in the locker. He's he's. I think he got Portsmouth Player of the Year last year. He's made he's made his shot stopping's unbelievable. Mm. So I bet he's glad to show everyone that he's just as good with his feet as well. And is that is that something that, that perhaps Jacko's worked on, or was that something that Craig's just seen there and then that Connor's in one on one? I think it's come from our style of play. I think whereas before maybe it was just me up top, you know, those aren't my attributes. Whereas Con when I have Connor or Dave in there making that quick run, it's almost me. Connor's runs made uh, the keeper's mind mm. down there, and he's and he's got the ability to be able to do it. Mm. It's two confident finishes he's done there because when he was through uh, last weekend, that was a confident was a finish. One, just it? lifted it over the yeah. keeper. Yeah. yeah. Let's remind ourselves of the team news, shall we? Two changes for Charlton that Jacko has made. Ben Perrington drops into left side centre half, which means that Pap Suarez is left wing back, and uh, Corey Blackett Taylor. Comes in for DJ as well. Great to see Jonathan Aliko on the bench. Captain, as I say, just borrowing that armband. Alex Gilbert, he's no, <laughs> no more than a smirk from Jaden here. But it, it looks a very solid team though, doesn't it? It does, and obviously Jacko's brought in legs as, as the wing-backs, but the biggest difference for me uh, from early on in the season is that midfield three. I know we're talking about two up top and, and three at the back, but it's, it's the midfield three where... I felt we was getting overrun, 
previously with two wide, out and out wide men. Now we've got three midfield players, and the three midfield players all complement each other. Dobson gets all round the park. Um, Gilby's got a fantastic engine, box to box. And mm. then you've got Elliot Lee. If we can get the ball into him in and around the box, something happens. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's the midfield three that I, you know, that, that have pleased me most. Definitely. It's going to be interesting for Sean Clare, who's obviously not a centre half. Ben Perrington, who's not a centre half, but both of them can mm. do that job very well. We'll see how. How that one goes. Let's look at Shrewsbury then, shall we? Led by Steve Cottrell, of course, and thankfully seems over his illness. Wish him all the best there. Just the one clean sheet in the last 25 matches in all competitions. And they've had a player sent off in the last two matches. Ryan Bowman, their danger man, with five goals in his last five games. And Daniel Udo as well has got two in two. He's got five in total. So, uh, Jaden, they, they can score, but they do concede. So going forward, we're looking to, to score and be on the front foot here, aren't we? I think so, yeah, especially with the addition of, of Corey coming in. He'll, he hasn't played uh, as much as he probably would have liked in the last few weeks because of DJ's brilliant form. So I'm sure he's got a point to prove. Mm. And, uh, and Pape too, which I'm happy to see there. He's, uh, he's a great lad and I'm hoping he has a good game. Do you think he really suits that lit, that wing back role? Definitely, Perfectly. yeah, definitely. And Per suits the left side centre half role as well. He, uh, it's it's a chance for perhaps to you know like like you say you've got to come in it and you have to perform. There's that pressure now because you're coming into a team that's getting results. Ben's very versatile. We like him as a player, but he's been brilliant as a wing back, hasn't he? Getting forward as well as defending, yeah, yeah. scoring goals. But he's good in the air, isn't he? Mm. You know, that's another attribute he's got. And you know, that won't phase him. I don't think playing playing left side centre half. No. How tough is this curve from a managerial point of view? I mean, we're going to a place where, again, the expectation now, because we've turned things around, that we should go and win. But they've won three and drawn one of, of their last mm. four matches at home in all competitions. It's not an easy place to no, go, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, they are down there and struggling a little bit, but they are at home and they play a certain way. And Steve Cottrell is a, is a manager that will get the best out of them. Mm. He'll fire them up as much as he can. So I think it's the, it's the start for me. Can we impose ourselves? Because they're going to be concerned about us. They know we're on this run and you know the players we've got in our squad. So can we get off to a really good start? Very windy conditions as well, Jaden. Does that change your game in any way? Do you have a little chat to the lads about getting in shots or crosses or even more so than normal or is it just the same as? I think depending on you know which end you get at the start makes a massive difference. If you've got the win, you've got to, it's, you've got to take advantage. I know a lot gets said about it, it but it, you really do get a massive advantage from it. Mm. OK, well, let's get up there then, shall we, and join our commentary team of Terry Smith, Greg Stubbley, and yes, he has made a trip up north.